know, everywhere we went, uh, sort of habitually, we would collect wishing rocks, which are river stones with a full white band around them. Um, and so it's always sort of, you know, by practice that my parents, you know, created this relationship where we would look for rocks or look for patterns and, you know, identify, um, you know, interesting objects. And so a few of the pieces actually came from my parents' collections. Um, but some of the other pieces I've bought, uh, you know, at rock and gem stores throughout the city. Um, but what I'm looking for is, you know, a much more direct relationship with people who source them, find them, who, that sense of discovery and, you know, the reveal. Um, you know, I'd love to, you know, either go, you know, and part of this process of finding them or, you know, to be a part of cracking them open, um, just to sort of become closer, to have a closer relationship to that sense of discovery um, would be really fascinating for me. Okay. So for this one, what drew me to it was this sense of depth and this sense of looking or feeling so much like stars or a galaxy um, or just having this, you know, this nebulous feel to it. Um, and with all of the pieces, they're sort of designed so that um, almost like a religious uh, shrine or like a religious uh, monument or something where you can stand in front of it and have these really personal experiences where you can look into it and perceive a much, much larger experience or an experience much greater than yourself. So for this one, to be able to stand in front of it and to just sort of lose yourself in seeing, you know, a sky full of stars... Oh, it's the, yeah, it's taking the sky, it's taking the, the starry night and then compacting it mm -hmm. and compressing it almost. Right. And the fact that they are natural objects that have this sort of inherent purity in them, you know, this ability to instantly be able to look at them and see the stars or see space feels like that grounds our relationship with the universe in a much um, in a really physical way, you know, so sort of stripping away the sort of spiritual connotations of mm -hmm. trying to understand that relationship and bringing it back to almost a very scientific understanding of the nature of all things. That these objects come out of the earth through these volcanic processes and then we dig them and then we discover them and then they reference or replicate the sky or the stars. And, you know, I feel like the use of neon and the use of light to sort of reveal those things about them feels natural, um, because if you think of the stars as purely concentrations of gas and light, then that's the only thing that I'm doing in terms of modifying these objects. Whether it be the interior of a geode or the brilliance of Labradorite, I mean, you know, unless light hits it, you don't see those layers of color. Right. And this one in particular is so beautiful because all the sort of planes of reflection, they change as you move around. Oh, it. yeah. So there's this sense of having sort of a kinetic relationship with it, that its physical properties change depending on your movement and sort of your interaction with it. And so it feels dynamic and it feels deep so that when you stand in front of it, it really does feel like there's, you know, you're looking into this sort of gas cloud or you're looking into something that feels much more dimensional. Oh, into that classic picture that you see of the Milky Way. Yeah, exactly. How, however that picture is taken. Right. right.